Welcome to the producer's commentary for season 15, episode 2 of Category 5 Technology TV. I'm Robbie Ferguson, joined and I'm Jeff Weston. By my friend Jeff Weston. Yeah. Jeff has been instrumental in the creation of episode 2. We're going to get right into it and mm -hmm. talk all about your new found involvement. Oh my gosh. Here at Category so new. 5 Technology TV. Uh, if you haven't already seen it, please check the description below because we are going to be basically given tons of spoilers here. And uh, it's always best to see the episode first before you see the producer's commentary because otherwise we're talking about stuff that you haven't seen, visual effects that you haven't yet seen, and they are um, pretty vast in yeah. this episode. So shall we get into it, Jeff? Of course. Well, let's That's hit play. Here. here we go. Welcome to Category 5. Season 15, episode two. Ah, now, what I love about this episode is that we took a different approach from our from episode one, where we went more with a, a scripted cinematic feel. Mm -hmm. And because of the chip shortage that we we're facing, <laughs> uh, you know, you had this brilliant idea. Let's play off the matrix. And yeah, that this scene, empty warehouse. <laughs> yeah, I think that scene is called like the desert of the desert reality or something mm -hmm. and so okay. like this is what we're playing off right. of which is that that scene in the matrix now this this was a I, this is my first time building a world yeah so will. jeff actually be, became our set creator for episode two yeah and so we were just figuring out unreal engine and while we were started building this unreal was on uh, episode, or, uh 4. version 4.27 yep switched uh, ep uh Version 5 came out, so we made the switch partway through. <laughs> but what made this scene particularly difficult is having never worked with Unreal Engine um, before in my capacity, I had to right. figure out a way to create a lit environment uh -huh. without any lights so that we didn't cast shadow. Right. That was a No shadows. Work. No yeah. shadows. Interesting. Yeah. And, and, and it also made it really hard for spatial because there's no reference point. For it really made it hard or... to like position how high are the chairs. Well, you can't see a floor because it doesn't actually exist. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so now, you don't really you know, realize this kind of stuff as you're seeing it because we've already pulled it off. That's right, yeah. And now this here was my first dabbling in an actual real world environment. Uh, nice. in Unreal Engine. And so, I've got binaural audio happening here. So I yeah. produce the audio you can hear. If you have headphones on, you'll hear those sparks and stuff happening all around you. Yeah, and so what was neat is I had to create this warehouse where things were empty and void. Yeah. So I had to make it look like Just like, like a abandoned. Raspberry Pi warehouse. That's right. Exactly like that. So oh, it's look at big open area. Mini it was me really, and really mini fun. Jeff. Yeah. Like, there, there are no limits anymore to what we can do. I mean, we're in this massive studio set. I should mention, so what we're seeing here is our first ever cold open. So yeah. we're working on evolving our format clock for season 15, season 16, as we're approaching that. And part of that format clock is to have a cold open, which is a much more interesting way, Jeff, to introduce the topic that we are going to be covering. So mm -hmm. rather than saying, hey, I'm Robbie, hey, I'm Jeff, and we're gonna be showing you uh, the Vim 4 microcomputer and then going into an intro and then starting the show, it's like, hey, let's have some fun with it. Let's Absolutely. do some cinematics, let's do some acting, and just have a blast creating that kind of, uh, what, what is this episode about? So the, in the first five minutes of the show, oh, and I have to talk about Henry, and yeah. we come back, oh that tattoo, that tattoo on his arm, I actually added that through visual effects. Like there are so many visual effects that you don't see. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, but you don't realize it's fake. Well, um, even like that there, the only thing that was real was Henry's hand and, and the- The stream deck. Stream deck. I Everything else deck. was CG. Now, okay, things are moving tough. so fast in this intro. This See part how right fast here. they're moving? So when you were working on this- It uh, would crash and crash and crash. Jeff, right. how many boxes are there on every shelf? Uh, depending on the shelf, we had anywhere from about 36 to, I think it was 125 per shelf. And there are about a thousand million shelves. Yes. And so I kept crashing Unreal Engine trying to move the shelves past us. So instead what I did is I locked the cinematic camera to Becca, I locked me to Becca, and then I moved us through the shelves. Right, still gives the same effect. Exactly, because the camera is locked to the actors and so it looks like we're actually flying through these shelves, yes. but the shelves are stationary. We're the only thing moving. Now what's neat about that scene is it's only, what, 15, 20 seconds where you actually see the shelves on camera. Yeah. 
but we had to, I, I had to make those shelves <laughs> yep. and all the boxes and place them. But like there's that one zoom in where you see the Caddis logo. Yep. That's actually a decal. It's not on the box. Mm. It's just an, an, an image that's been It looks been so good though, Jeff. It, it looks, looks real. real. Yeah. Very real. Very real. But one of the things you may not have noticed and I, is in the shelf behind you, and I realized that the video keeps playing and so we've it's passed, but there's all these little white boxes and on top of a couple of them is an actual mm. Caddis mm. Vim 4 within the scene. Yeah, here, let's zoom in, you see that? Yeah. How cool is that? So tell us about that. So when we first decided we were gonna do this episode, we were playing around with the idea of making a 3D model using a, an app on a phone. Yeah. And so it was taking mm -hmm. like hundreds of shots. Photogrammetry of a Vim 4. Yeah, and yeah. it was like, I think a two day process to try and make it all work. <laughs> and then when it compiled, it just looked like a pile of gook. <laughs> It did not work. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to refigure this out. We're learning so, the 3D model as that's well. That's right. Yeah. So instead what I had to do was build a 3D model using flat images in all the different components of the Caddis, build it in Blender, and then import it into Unreal Engine, and then throw that right. onto the shelves. And so you get this 3D looking model mm -hmm. that's based off pictures. It was wow. really, really neat. That's cool. So, you know... Now you also have, uh, and you know we see it uh, coming up soon, mm -hmm. a really high res photo of a Caddis Vim Four. Oh, we will see that. And and like it just being able to use those images and integrate it into the system, just like you're seeing with this the, the Odroid XU Four, changes the dynamics of how you uh, view something. Yeah. Like it just it brings this. A paradigm to life in a whole new way as opposed to the old format of just like camera and here let me hold it up and show it to you yeah like the cinematics of using and that's part of so the cool. idea i mean part of the idea is how we display this um i can show you a caddis vim 4 and i can unbox it and mm -hmm. i can do the traditional youtube video where you're seeing a close-up from overhead and all that kind of stuff but we really wanted to take this to the next level and and part of that is the what is so i say format clock and i realize maybe that's a term that some viewers may not be familiar with you and i take for granted that mm -hmm. we've been working in radio since long time. 2000 um, so um, a format clock is to say okay in the first five minutes of the video this happens in the next five minutes of the video this happens and in the next five minutes this happens and so it's a it's a clock that tells us what we need to do yeah. during that time and it keeps us on task and it keeps uh, a good steady flow to the show so this as the second segment we talk about um, the advantages to single board computers and what other single board computers are out there that are um, not Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. for example, because Raspberry Pi are in such short supply. So we talk about that. That's our second segment in the format clock, which is to say, okay, what are the advantages now of what we are about to show you? Yeah. So the first thing was the cold open. The cold open tells us what we're going to show you, which was the Caddis Fim 4. The second uh, portion of the format clock says, okay, what are the advantages to what we're about to show you? Yeah. And what we're going to see is the third segment of the format clock, which is strictly jumping into, okay, I want to show you. This is the new version of the, like that virtual reality, augmented reality version of the unboxing, yeah. which is to show you the actual product. So that's what we're coming up to. Yeah. And, and I, what I really uh, in particular liked about how this format is working is um, it gives you the ability to not just talk, but also to show the various components, mm, show in it a very in, unique way. Yeah. In a very unique way that I think is um, not utilized anywhere else in the tech education stratosphere of, of YouTube or anywhere else on online. And it's now that's an actual Caddis M4 that you're holding. That's that not, is, yeah. that's not the 3d model. Right. Um, but the 3D model was used in the in the, the Matrix scene there. Mm -hmm. um, really, really, really cool stuff. Sponsor message. Oh, yeah. Sponsor this is important. Message. Hey, go to Ameridroid.com. We love them. Yeah. And it is important because they help to furnish and fund what we do. That's right. Um, anytime you see a sponsor message built into our episodes, you know that those folks are actual supporters of Category 5 Technology TV. A YouTube ad is a little different because, yes, we get um, revenue from that that helps us to produce our show. But the sponsor videos, uh, sponsor um, tags and things like that, like what Henry is doing right there with Ameridroid, these are folks that are actually supporting what we do directly. 
heavily. So they're yep. saying, hey, we love Category 5 and we want to stand by them and we want to do the same with them. So that's where that comes in. So there's yep. that shot that you're talking about, Jeff. Yes. So this is where we get into the third portion of our format clock, which is to say, hey, we're not doing a standard unboxing. Let's get a look yeah. at the Caddis Vim 4. We're zooming right in there. And look how crisp and clean that is. Like that's a, that's a massively enlarged photo of such a small board. It's about just a little bit bigger than a credit card. Yeah. And like to be able to show that on the screen and be like, oh, this is cool. And things like that, having an explosion. And then here is a bullet list of the specifications. So these are the yeah. books, these are the book specs of the Caddis Vim 4. But we always want it to be much more entertaining. Mm -hmm. But it's like you're learning about the product, but at the same time, it's it's fun to learn about it. Yeah. And one of the unique things that I did here that's different than some unboxing videos that I've seen on YouTube is, so you see that bullet list populating and HDR video processing support, micro HDMI. So typically we see a, an unboxing and it's like, here's the bullet list. We have two by two Mimo. We, we've got Wi-Fi 6. We've got this feature. We've got that feature. We've got HDMI. We've got HDMI input. And, and it's a bullet list. Yeah, which you can read online. It, which you can read online. And, and what I did here that's different than that, you see why each bullet point takes a little longer is because I'm not pointing to DSi. I'm not pointing to these features and saying that's what it is. I'm actually explaining, mm -hmm. okay, well, here's what that means in each of those bullet points. So watch back to that episode and you'll catch this. When I say there's gigabit ethernet, I talk about what that is. When I say there is a 40 pin GPIO, I'm talking about I squared C and the abilities. When I talk about the M.2 port, I'm talking about what that means to you. Mm -hmm. So we're explaining it, not just giving you the bullet points. I'm showing you the VIN power input and I'm showing you that I'm able to actually use uh, a power supply yeah. that's quick charge capable. Now, one of the things that I love about even just these, you know, split scenes is you put a lot of detail into the visual effects uh, in a very subtle way. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't I don't know if you know, you're watching and notice in the background, the smoke from the explosion that happened on the wall still is there. still smolder. Mm -hmm. It's still going in the background yep. to create this dynamic effect so that when you're doing these displays of like, hey, here's the bullet point, like you can yeah, see the smoke closely, just wisps, you know, yeah. wisps in the background. And that's what I love about this new shift to, you know, using Unreal Engine and going augmented reality is, is you can add these elements that otherwise we couldn't have done. I mean, we couldn't mm -hmm. have smoke in the studio <laughs> like yeah. if we were filming, yeah. but you yeah. could do it here. And it just brings the visual effects to, you know, a whole new level. And part of that is actually, um, Improving the visuals as well. Yeah. Oh, so it's yeah. to bring out those lights. It's it, you, from a technical standpoint. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know that a smoke machine at a at a rave is gonna make the lights and the lasers stand out, right? Yeah. So that's exactly the effect that I use, but virtual. Yep. And and even in this episode, you know, because it's our it's season, it's episode two of season fifteen. Yeah. You know, how much more advanced was your knowledge compared to episode one? Always with all the work always growing like your green screen work and the the chroma key cuts were yeah. so much well, more effective. i mean here we've got the screen shot for the augmented reality visual of the uh the screencast so mm -hmm. look at that and you can already see that if you compare that to episode one from season 15 the colors are more vibrant That's it right. stands out better it looks more realistic yeah. um, there's still things that i want to improve there's a little bit of ghosting when the screen moves and things like that but these are all things that I'm working on and learning. And, and as I go through the production uh, for each episode, I'm, I'm saying, oh, there's a little bit of ghosting there right. on episode two. So on episode three, I'm going to improve that. Oh, for sure. And e even with the set design, like I, I, I think of, you know, placing those chairs in the white room and placing the, yes. you know, the shelves. And, and, you know, in doing this, we're learning about even the resource management that we have to build into our production paradigm for, right. yeah. for this because like- How I'm, is this gonna perform during render? Exactly, because yeah. I'm doing my set design on a laptop yeah. with Unreal Engine. You've got the the big beefy i9. The decahedron. Yeah, but it, and it's coming together so unbelievably well. Now, one of the things I love about the Caddis and the way you show it here, and I realize that you know it, there's a bit of a speed up on the screen, but it, it is just how easy it is. Yeah. To, to run the Caddis installation, to, mm -hmm. to pick your distro yeah. and just run with it. And, and it was really neat being able to watch uh, the show come together and watch this paradigm, uh, you know, merging of the two because this is your screencast and seeing how flawless it fits together to show the ease of the, of, of the single board computer. Mm -hmm. It was really, really cool. 
And this, uh, looking at our format clock, this is the next phase of the format That's clock, right. which is to actually demonstrate the product. Yes. So we've gone through the first few phases of the format clock. We've shown you the unboxing, the pseudo unboxing. Now it gets into the actual use case of the product. Mm -hmm. So. Unlike an unboxing where, oh, look, here it is out of the box, and yep. that's the end of the episode. No, we want to actually show you and teach you what you can do with it. So yeah. it's not verbose. It's not overly technical or anything like that. But I show you enough about the performance of the board to be able to show you in this particular case, anyways, with the Vim 4, how it works, how you get it set up. And if you went and bought one, having seen the video you'd be able to follow the steps that I show you on the screen and be able to um, to get through that initial setup. And yep. here, uh, as we experience, for example, the, the lack of GNOME System Monitor, yeah. I'm, I'm also demonstrating the Linux tool, GNOME System Monitor, using apt, and we're learning these types of things without ever saying we're learning them. Mm -hmm. So these are being taught. I'm teaching how to use apt to install GNOME System, up to, uh, system Monitor, uh, I, and I later use it to fix a Firefox issue in Synaptic yep. Package Management. That's right. You see what I did there is I actually switched over from the command line to uh, GUI interface and did exactly the same process, but in, uh, reinstalled a snap. And we'll subtle see that in a moment. Education. It's subtle education, but it, it happens throughout the episode. So uh, if you watch closely, you'll see what we're actually doing there, which is to teach uh, methodologies, to teach Linux, to show Linux um, in a very positive light. Mm to say, ooh, this is missing Firefox, which we'll see in a moment, yep. um, but here's how easy it is to fix. Mm -hmm. And, and to, to demonstrate these things as part of a product review, and instead of the old unboxing paradigm, we're actually teaching you a fair bit about Linux and how to, how to install a game, mm -hmm. how to load it up, how to bring up your system monitor to be able to monitor your CPU resources and things like that. That's what we're doing right now. Yep, that's good. And even just the retro aspect of... You know, <laughs> I do love that. A Tron knockoff. I'm like, oh, that uh -huh. brings me back. Yeah. So good. I'm terrible at it. Oh, that's all right. I love it. That's good. I think when I was recording this, I actually... I was trying to figure out the keys that it used because I'm so used to WASD. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't use... It doesn't <laughs> use it. Okay. So I was trying to figure out what to push. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> well, you, you picked it up pretty quick. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, I died good. very quickly. Ah, oh, that's all right. Great game. You got to start somewhere. Great game. That's good. But I mean, what I love about the... the got to start somewhere, he says. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's true. You do. Oh, you're a novice at GLTron, but you're good at the rest of it. That's right. But what I love is that, you know, as you're, you know, you, the elements that you put into the production of the show, like you're sitting there, you know, going, okay, how, not only do I, how do I build the shots and stuff, but... How do I make this as dynamic a learning environment as possible? And I love that in that shot, you showed the system monitor in the background. Yeah. And, and as the game's playing, you didn't just view in on the game. You also had the, the operation in the background showing all of the resource usage. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it just it being able to do that in this production element uh, brings things to the next level. It, I believe it, it's it. changed the atmosphere. It's and, good. and what I've done here, if you notice, if you look closely, you'll notice that we never actually have left the augmented reality paradigm. So we're, right. we're actually looking at what appears to be a physical monitor on my desk. Yeah. So this is not a full screen uh, window. No, we're actually, um, we're looking at a monitor on my computer desk. And far in the background, I believe is bill set. Is yeah, not? you can see kind of, of uh, kind of blurred in the background there. There's other sets and things going on. And sometimes the camera pans and a little, you get a little bit of parallaxing at the back. Yeah. Um, and you'll also notice as you look at this, so why isn't that filling the screen? Because this is a 16 over 9 screen. Yep. Well, what are we looking at? And this is our return to, uh, and we just lost light. That's interesting. Hmm. There, That's back. there they are. Um, the uh, This video is our return to ultra wide. Yes. So as you can see, if you're watching this in that. full screen, you'll yeah. see that there are black bars on the top and bottom. Yep. And this is all part of our endeavor to create a, a tech ed broadcast that is uh, that is following paradigms um, that are used for cinematic video production. Mm -hmm. So the same um, techniques that are used for uh, Hollywood videos and, and television shows and movies, those are the paradigms that we're attempting to follow, that I'm trying to learn. You'll see that I've tapped into the rule of thirds right. on occasion throughout this episode because during episode two, I was really just starting to learn it. 
Yeah. Um, and there are different paradigms like that that you'll see here. And that's where that ultra wide comes in. Yeah. And one of the other paradigms, if I could use that word, if it's the right thing, maybe it's just a you know camera technique. But even though it's very subtle, the camera angle never stops moving. Um, and that's one of the things I think you instituted in episode one, or maybe it was episode two. And even the background just slowly over time. That's that parallax. You know, thing. alters mm -hmm. um, to, to keep things real, to keep things uh, non-stagnant. And, and it's good. And see, there's a clip from episode one where with, you know, Henry getting blown up by a creeper, which yep. I still love that scene. Oh, it's me like, too. That was, our, that was your first use of uh, Unreal Engine uh, making the island, was it not? That was my first full cinematic sequence yeah. that I produced. And look how far we've come. And it's yeah. just two episodes. <laughs> it's yeah. so good. Like, I, I think of the scene with Henry and the tattoo. Yeah. That was just a decal that you had. In to... fact, it wasn't. It was... Oh, it wasn't a decal. No. Uh, oh, because okay. So Henry's shot itself was produced in Unreal Engine. And then the, um, the tattoo was added through Fusion in... Da, oh, da Vinci Resolve. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So it's a it's a tie-in between products. Just like you're yeah. using Blender and Unreal Engine to create yep. your, your shelving, I'm okay. using a combination of Unreal Engine, Blender, and Da Vinci Resolve. See, I love it. I, look at so, that. Here we are, tracking. episode two, you know, director's commentary, and I'm learning something new. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> I love it. And if you'd like to learn how these things are actually done, make sure you subscribe to our channel, The Show Show, mm -hmm. where I actually teach how I do these things. So here we are talking about the fact that we did it. Well, if you'd like to learn how I created Henry's tattoo, you can actually follow the video on The Show Show mm -hmm. and see how I did it. That's good. Here we are in game. Nice. Yeah, very nice. And I, and I like even the note at the top, like, you know, Vim4 is running on a server, actual gameplay is yep. on a standard PC. Like, it's... You know, it's those kind of things that you you know you add in as a new element of like, hey, be aware of this, and, and it yep. just changes. And the that. server output on the bottom right to show you yeah. that there is no tick delay on the Vim four. Like this is live server output. I I love it. I love the elements that get thrown into this new structure. It really takes it to the next level, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's so much fun. Now we're coming to the end here, mm -hmm. and um, this I, is the final part of our format clock, Jeff, yeah. which uh, deals with our with my final thought. And then my ultimate demise. Yes, which I look forward to every time. Me too. Now your ultimate Why demise here to it? plays into the beginning. Yes, it ties into the cold open. Right. The, so you have these bookends. Correct. And um, we had to utilize, you know, outside assistance to make that happen because that was beyond our skill set. <laughs> beyond mine, yeah. Paul Gibson actually created this sequence that you're about to see. There you go. And that was rather complex, as yeah. you can imagine, because, hey, uh, Bill is in New York and I'm here in Ontario, and uh, we had to create a shot that would, that would actually work as the agent taking over my, uh, my program. Yeah, and, and for that shot in particular, if I recall correctly, um, both you and Bill had to move your head the same way. Yes. So it required even a scripting, if you will. And let me remind you, he was in New York and I was in Ontario, Canada. And you were not filming on the same time frame. Like <laughs> no. It was, it was a so, span. So I'm actually connected to Bill and I, he has a laptop in front of him with me on Google Meet. Yep. And I'm showing him the movement that he needs to do. And he's mimicking that movement on screen, like on his camera. And then he's taking the SD card out of the camera, uploading it to Google Drive and sending me that file. Yeah. And like, that's how we did it. It's so neat. Like when you realize those are the things that go into those little elements on the show to make it that much more impressive. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness, everything has to be planned out. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's good. I feel like we're almost at the point of like storyboarding episodes before we even get started. I do storyboard everything. Do you really? I do. I didn't even I'm know. a terrible artist, but, and everything, as you know, is scripted and the script yeah. contains like positioning of cameras, yes. positioning of the actors, how things are going to look, where things are moving and what's happening on the scene. And See, I, knew, I didn't else. know you storyboard though. Yeah, I do my best. I mean, it's stick figures and pretty nasty, but. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's two things that I've learned new. It's got to be done. I mean, every scene is, is very well planned. Yeah. Um, and that 
that's the way that I have to do the production, right? So so good. Yeah. But so, yeah, that's that's episode two. That's kind of our uh, commentary of how it played out. Mm. All the exciting new things that we're learning. Um, you know, and the next episode is just going to get that much better. Oh, the next episode. <sighs> I wish we could tell them about the next episode. You oh make sure gosh. you subscribe to Linux Tech Show, aka Category Five Technology TV. Also subscribe to um, the show show. Yep. And uh, yeah, uh, am I allowed to say subscribe? I think so. I don't know. It's about the only time this you can because every other time you yeah. die. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is casual. This is just us hanging out. So yeah. Okay, so quickly before we wrap up, Jeff, what is, uh, is it just, and this is putting you on the spot, I know. Uh-oh. Uh, let's say, what is the favorite uh, thing that you have encountered, whatever it may be, throughout the process of episode two, what is it that you've learned or done or experienced or discovered that gets you excited? What is the very most exciting thing that you've discovered? Mm, I think it's the versatility of Unreal Engine. Um, because when I think back to Gosh, I want to say a year and a half ago when you first presented the idea. not long ago. Not long ago. No, but you first presented the idea of we're going to switch to augmented reality and use this program called Unreal Engine. Mm -hmm. and, and he's thinking Unreal Tournament? That's exactly what I'm Telefrag. like. I'm like, that was a like the Redeemer and, you know, video <laughs> game. But, but here we are a year and a half later and, and having to learn Unreal Engine, you know, version 4.27 watching version five come out yeah watching the updates and now even um you know they're they're going to be rolling out 5.1 already and, done here yeah, yeah yeah and so like all of these changes and, and seeing just how much you can manipulate it you know to get the right shot the right lighting yeah. the right every element uh within unreal engine to make the show exactly what you need it to be Mm -hmm. that's what gets me excited. I'd have to agree. Like yeah. I, I loved when you're like, Hey, we need to make the matrix scene in the white room. And I'm like, well, I don't know how to do that. Right. And you're like, well, figure it out. <laughs> okay. You, go. you know, and this so why like, I pay you the big bucks. Yeah. And so like, I'm playing with different things. I'm like, okay, well if I delete this and if I change this, all of a sudden right. I blow up the world. And I'm like, Oh, oh. I, okay. I got to figure that one out. <laughs> but, but once I got it, I was like, Oh, yeah, that's, that's so intuitive. Yeah how the back end of Unreal Engine is made. And that's sure. what gets me excited is because there's a couple times now, you know, episode one, episode two, and even with episode three where you've said, do this. And I'm like, is that even possible? Everything and it's, is possible. And it, and it is. Yeah. It's just a matter of finding it. And and that's what gets me excited is where can we push the envelope and, yeah. and the levels of perfection, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what gets me excited. Can I take it one step further into sure. what... Is, has me very excited and along the same vein Jeff it's being able to manipulate shots after the shoot yes so consider the difference between our traditional style of shooting video which would be set up a camera do the show and then regret that something was off or something yeah. was wrong or the camera was mispositioned and we didn't get a close-up or whatever it might be there are so many things in the traditional sense that are regrets. Mm -hmm. In the augmented reality version of our production paradigm, which is through Unreal Engine, it's so easy, and I've done it so many times, to say, mm, I'm not quite happy with that shot, yes. so I'll actually move the camera in yeah. post-production. We've already shot it, so Jeff is standing there on the set and I've said, oh, I'd like to do this with that shot. And so I'll change it. I'll change the lighting on your face after the shoot is complete. Mm -hmm. um, you'll notice in episode two, you'll see that there are no TVs behind me. That's right. And there are two lights behind me. I did that after the shoot. So yeah. originally it was all the way it was before with TVs and everything else. But I decided, no, I want to put a lamp over there. I want to. So I changed the set. Mm -hmm after I had shot it. That's right. And then I redid all the camera movements and everything else and all that stuff can be done afterwards. So it's yep. so easy and, and you're so enabled as a producer 
to change your shots after the fact. And I think that's why Unreal Engine is taking over as far as yeah. uh, video creation uh, for for YouTube and and in particular for big budget shows like uh, The Mandalorian, for example. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. That's and, you exactly know, and why. to to that end, um, what's changed uh, even in how we collaborate on the shows is before it was you know when I think to our live episodes, it was you show up, we do the show, and then it's just cutting sequences. Yeah. But now we do everything. You could put the show together, and you're like, okay, watch this scene. What do you think? Let's blow up Henry. Well, yeah. And, <laughs> and I'm like sitting there going, I like that, but I think that, you know, I'm standing too high in the seat, you know, thinking of the white room. You know, yep. I'm too high compared to the chair. Yep. It's like, Remember oh, your little hands? Oh, oh my gosh, my he little, had little hands. little hands in one of the shots. They, for it some was reason. Like that, um, was it the Burger King commercial where the guys yeah, like, yeah, had yeah, little yeah. hands? Just because of the way the angle was. And so yep. we had to take this two dimensional film. And you never know. No. And, and change it up in the angles. And I think at one point, like, if so you're I, standing at the side, I'm actually lean backwards like yeah. this or so something. so I moved and, the camera in post. Yeah, and it was so cool. Yeah. I love it. It was Fixed neat. It, all. it was I, <laughs> so much fun. No I, limits. I love it. What are you enjoying about the new production paradigm? Mm -hmm. We'd love to hear from you below in the comments. And we look forward to seeing you on episode three of season 15 for Category 5 Technology TV. It's been nice having you here. Thanks for watching. Nice. See you next time. Good job. Cheers. Cheers. Well, that was weird. <laughs>